How do you talk on the ham radio for a newcomer to the hobby? I'll tell you that and a few other things to help make it a little bit easier when you first get on the air. You're watching Ham Radio Concepts. Ham Radio Concepts. Uh-oh, ramble alert. <laughs> I love talking. This one will be a little shorter than the other ones. But how would you talk on the ham radio? How do you talk as an amateur radio operator? That doesn't exist in the study guide. That's not a test question on how do you talk. Now, there are rules that you need to follow for identification, for emergency communications, for courteous, you know, stuff like that. But there's no way that says you have to start about the weather and end about talking about the solar index and it has to be ham radio related. Wrong. Some of the things you really hear on ham radio blow my mind that I hear it on there. Some things I would stay away from. Before we get into how to really engage in a conversation, what should you not talk about? And this comes from personal experience, much like these last couple of videos of what I've heard over the years, what I've said or what I haven't said or how I've helped somebody else. We want to stay away from politics, religion, and abortions. Okay, those three things right there can get a whole bunch of things stirred up on a statewide network and cause a lot of people not to want to talk to you. Okay, it doesn't mean you're wrong or he's right, but who is right or wrong? Exactly. It starts a whole world of mess. Okay, so let's go to the very basic building block. This is a, one of the test questions in ham radio while you got licensed is, the, and I'll give you the answer and you can tell me the question. The answer, what is ham radio? It is the the, how does it word it in the book? The aid or the uh, the good being, good well-being and good welfare of personal life and property in immediate danger, something to that effect. There's always that possibility that you'll be on the radio and somebody will call in a dire emergency for help. Now, it doesn't always happen, and I've never been involved in that situation, but it can happen. So when you're talking and you're having a good time and meeting people on the road and you're traveling to ham fest and you're going to work, always think. I'm a ham operator because I can help somebody in a potentially dangerous, life-threatening situation who may call me on this radio and I'll be the only one to answer. Always get that geared in your head, okay? Now, once you have that geared in your head, no such thing as zombies, maybe. So we're not in an imminent danger of emergency communications. Can we talk about fun stuff? Sure. Can we talk about drum sets and dirt bikes? Sure. Can we talk about jet skis? Absolutely. Do we want to talk about you supporting abortion? Not really. You don't want to talk about that kind of stuff. You can talk about weather. You can talk about your favorite bands. You can talk about similar interests. You got to meet people and find out, you know, the thing about ham radio is there's so many friendly people that share the same interest as you. What I'm trying to spare you is getting on there and being afraid to talk and being that guy that says, really, I never make contacts on that network. Well, maybe you just need a little bit of coaching to get you familiar and make you sound a little bit more like you know what you're doing, you know? So if I was going to get on a radio, let's say a repeater network, let's say we're going to use a statewide repeater network because there's a lot of people listening. Remember this, there is always somebody listening. I know for a fact, in my area, there's one person, I won't mention his name. I've heard this guy speak two words in 15 years. He listens all day. He knows more about me than I do. And he's had enough one time and he keyed that mic, cussed somebody out and that was it. And I'm like, really? Like, what are you even a ham for? But he's always listening. So if you're doing something that is against the rules, somebody could always report you. You may turn that radio on and hear nobody, but there's somebody listening. There is always somebody listening. And with that said, a good opportunity to practice what Dr. Rich from the Love Doctors always said, two ears, one mouth. Listen twice as much as you talk. You'll listen to a lot of people. You'll learn a lot of ways they talk, some of the lingo, some of the things that go on, the different things during the day, and that'll make you feel like you're fit right in. You don't have to be an expert to get on radio, but it helps sometimes. When you're a newbie, I could tell people that sound like they're reading their call sign right off a of paper. It happened two days ago. I mentioned it in the last video. And I heard that and I said, he's a new person. And nobody answered him. K-J-4-Y-Z-I, and he would let go. And KJ4, okay, so he doesn't know what to do. Great, maybe he could watch the video or maybe I gave him a little bit of an insight. You know, how do you initiate a conversation? A conversation is a two-way conversation, it's two ways, two directions. What good is me talking to someone who's not listening or someone walking that way and doesn't care? 
or someone that's listening to me and has nothing to say. It's not a conversation. So let's talk amongst each other. Maybe you're not the talkative type. Okay, I get that. But find something that you could talk about. Let me tell you how you would start a conversation. So if I turn the radio on, first thing I want to do, find a, re a repeater frequency near me, turn it on and listen for about 15 seconds. Why? Because somebody could be on that radio. As soon as I turn this off or turn it on, they turn theirs and they said, hey man, I got a phone call real quick. Give me 10 seconds. I'll be right back. If you let go, nobody said anything. You turned it on, nobody's talking. And you, you dialed in there. Now, you may run across a couple guys and say, what are you doing? Can't you hear there's someone talking? Or you say, hey, you know, we're, we're talking here, but you can come on in and join us in this little conversation and we'll pass it around like a round table. My name's this, this is my call, that's him. What is your call? And then nice guys start passing around. There's always that guy that's gotta be, can't you hear someone's talking? Well, you turn the radio on, you saw no signal bars, you push that button. You gotta wait a couple seconds. So I wait, I listen, nobody there, good. I'm not in the middle of a task or ready to jump out of the car because what good is starting a conversation and leaving two seconds later? I'm ready to talk. I push the button and I throw my call sign out with a directive. Well, a directive, I mean, you, you, could throw your, you could just throw your call sign out. I do it all the time. But for the starters, try this. KJ4YZI, mobile. Or KJ4YZI, listening on Miami repeater. Or KJ4YZI, mobile and standing by. I mean, I've even gone as far as KJ4YZI, good afternoon. I mean, you could do whatever. It initiates someone to say, hey, someone just joined on the radio network and they want to talk. Maybe they're driving for an hour and they want to talk. KJ4YZI, uh, uh, you know, uh, Miami and traveling northbound on 95 for the next half hour, whatever. What you don't want to do is do this. CQ, 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 this is Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu, India. CQ, CQ, CQ calling, CQ and listening. This is, don't do that on a repeater. <laughs> Please don't do that, okay? That's meant for HF and finding some distant weak stations or just calling out on HF in general. There's always people listening. Some people don't want to talk to you. Some people are a little clicky and they want to talk to their buddies. All you can do is KJ4, YZI, Miami, standing by. That's it. If somebody hears that, they're going to say, KJ4YZI, this is KM4MCK. Oh, great. Someone just came back to me. Now what? Well, it depends on your personality. You could talk about anything. What I would do is initiate a conversation. Hey, John, my name's Eric. I'm mobile right now in Miami. I'm traveling north of 95. It's a beautiful day outside. How are you doing, John? And he comes back to me and says, hey, I'm doing good, Eric. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, I haven't heard you before. Uh, I'm out here every day between five and six. I'm using an ICOM 5100. I'm traveling and uh, you have a good signal. Oh, great, thanks. I'm using this kind of radio and uh, I'm new to this repeater system. I'm just traveling around, uh, you know, I'm about 35. Uh, I mow lawns for a living, whatever. Whatever you want to talk about and then it'll progress. But here's what you don't want to do. This is KJ4YZI. Is anybody intelligent out there? Only intelligent people only. Please come now. And I've heard someone say that. Why? Because this guy was an arrogant butthead to keep it clean. He, he had this rant that, you know, he said, I'm tired of people getting on talking about weather. I'm tired of people talking about their radios. There's got to be somebody as an intelligent engineer that I could get on the same level with. Well, got news for you. I purposely talk about the weather because everybody can relate. Not everybody can relate on your super heterodyne flip flop coefficient transistor or whatever. And you may turn people off that way. I get it. I get, listen, I get it. You're an engineer and you're an expert. You have way more college education than I ever will. I get that. Just talk to me, man. That's it. Just talk to me. You don't have to get macho man. You know, you, there's people out there that do that. This is KJ four YZI. And I have currently erected myself on the repeater over like there's people that do that. I mean, <laughs> we, <laughs> Oh man, I love this camera. You know, we don't have to do that. Just, you know, over time, people will know who you are. I know there's a bunch of people I talk to that are real sharp, man. These people are geniuses and you'd never know it by the way they talk to you or the way you talk to them. And that's what makes more people interested to talk to you. You want to turn a bunch of people off? Get on a statewide network, call out the very first time that you've never called out and tell someone, don't tell me that you know more than me because I have a master's. Now, 
Who wants to talk to me? Not the way to do it. I'm just giving you the extreme example and the absolute beginning example, okay? Get on to talk about, yeah, the weather's currently 86. Uh, you know, man, we've gotten some serious rain the last couple days, about three inches on my weather station. Uh, I'm looking forward to cutting the grass this weekend because it really is high. So on the way to get some gas, uh, maybe uh, it's not raining tomorrow. I cut the grass, sharpen the blades, everything's good. And then maybe I'll go out in the boat and I'll enjoy a nice dinner at I Jalisco in Sebastian Mexican restaurant. You ever been there, John? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you know, it just, it's just, it's, it's revolving conversation, two-way conversation. Let's have fun. <clears throat> if somebody gets on there and says, please help, mayday, mayday. Th th even if they're not a ham, they got a ham ready in their hand, they're calling, you stop what you're doing. You stop what you're doing and you address that person in distress. I, again, I've never had that situation. You may be the person that saves somebody's life, please, okay? Put the macho aside, save that person's life, be the good person, pass that story on to somebody else and that advice to somebody else. Hopefully, knowledge I give you, you pass on to somebody else down the road as a newcomer, okay? Uh, when you're a professional. I'm not a professional, I am a total noob, believe me. I just never want to know everything. So let's talk about the other side, the other side of the coin for a minute, okay? Uh, the people that are out there, you, that's right, you, you know, you're my subscribers, you're way older than I am, you've been doing this since you had to build your own radius, I get that, I honor you. But there's some out there that are just arrogant. They just, you know, when you hear somebody that sounds like they're brand new and it sounds like they're reading their call sign out there, be the person after the second, excuse me, second or third time, be the person to acknowledge them and make them feel welcome. I mean, so many people I've met on our local analog machine, they got on there, nobody was there, nobody was there, but then one person gets on and they just come at them like, well, the first thing you should have done was studied. You know, you don't get on here and ask questions. I never heard from this dude. One kid was 17, never heard from him again. Don't know where he went. It wasn't one of our guys that was like that. It was somebody passing through or something. And they got on there before I can, that was it, they were gone. Never heard from the kid again. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm using a bow phone. Yeah, Chinese crap, yeah. Blah. Take your macho, get on 75 meters. You wanna know where you can talk about abortion and politics and useful information and not identify your station and break all the rules in ham radio? Go to 75 meters, that's where it's at. 3.945, somewhere in there. <laughs> I know, send the hate mail to right here in the comments. Let me tell you another bad habit that people have. So a test question in an amateur radio license manual, test question. When should you identify? Now, I don't know where this came from, but this habit really sucks because you're clogging up, sometimes in a statewide or a worldwide reflector, you're clogging up hours of conversation per day by every time you push that button, you say the other person's call sign and then you say your call sign. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna use John again. KM4MCK, this is KJ4YZI. How you doing today, John? And John goes back. Yeah, KJ4YZI, this is KM4MCK. I'm doing good. How you doing? Back to you, KJ4YZI, this is KM4MCK. Oh, KM4MCK, KJ4YZI, very good. I'm doing well. Got over a cold, but uh, everything's good. I'm on the way to the dinner. Back to you, KM4MCK, this is KJ4YZI. Oh, KJ4YZI, KM4MCK, very good, fine business. 7-3, KJ4YZI, this is KM4MCK. Who? created this that you know I, i'll tell you where it came from it came from these d star and dmr infusion reflectors because all of a sudden you're treating this like a worldwide dx contact and you got to do this all the time the the answer in the book says upon initiating a conversation at the end of the conversation and at least once every 10 minutes in the conversation why are and some of these people are experts and they've been doing ham for years why are we talking and throwing your call out every single time so what happens Somebody new comes in, they hear that, they say, that's what I have to do. I have to start my sentence with my call sign. No, you don't. Get off that. I don't know where that hobby came from. Bad habit, okay? And nobody's said anything to correct anybody. They're just doing it. And it's like, you, you add up five minutes of conversation times how many digital talk groups or statewide systems in the world, you're talking hours of people with conversations, hours of of conversations including only letters and phonetics of call signs. I mean, let's get rid of that. No need for that. I've even had some people, they, they, they panic, like they've went two sentences without, without IDing. And I, well, I, I'll do this on purpose. 
I'll start a timer or something. I'll watch the clock. I will not ID until 10 minutes. And they'll, they'll be like, okay, I better ID for ID. This is uh, uh, WB4XYZ or whatever. And then I still don't do it. It's been four minutes. It's not an ID, you know? It's great sometimes when you're in a worldwide thing so people hear who you are. If you want to throw it out more than once every 10 minutes, but you're not required, okay? And that's just what it is. But, but there's always somebody, okay, well, uh, it's time to ID again. Uh, KO, no, it's not. It's been six minutes. I'm not ready to ID yet. So you can ID yourself and you don't have to ID for me. The law or the rule does not say you have to ID for me. It doesn't work that way. So those are the kind of things. Other than that, talk about the weather. Talk about football. You like football? Football? You like jet skis? You like basketball? I'll tell you what I like. Women's soccer and women's tennis. Some chicks are brute force. Talk about that. You a soccer fan? Talk about the FIFA World Cup. Talk about anything. Just don't get into why Trump does what he does with abortions or does or doesn't support. I don't know. I'm not a politician. You may hear words on the radio like QRZ or QTH or QSL. So Q codes are short abbreviations that were originally created for Morse code or CW. So instead of saying in CW, what is your location or where do you live? You could say QTH and that makes it short for CW. But it seems that you're gonna hear a lot of people that have adopted this habit of saying QSL. Oh, QSL, like, are you alive? QSL, that means, that doesn't mean yes. QSL was originally meant Without going into a definition, QSL was meant, are you acknowledging the receipt of my transmission? So then there's a guy on the radio that may say, you know, you, you tell him, uh, are you at full power? Ah, QSL, QSL, QSL. No, we don't have to say QSL as if it's the word yes. And it's not the word affirmative. It is, this is KJ4YZI Echo Lima 97. QSL means did you get that information? Like through a satellite or on HF with a weak signal. So don't feel like you have to listen to these people and start pushing these Q codes. You know, uh, I, I don't even know what half the Q codes are to be honest. I know there's three. QRZ, which is on HF, like who's calling? Station calling, come again? QRZ, this is KJ4YZI. We don't really use that on VHF, UHF. Or, oh uh, yeah, what's your QTH? That's, what is your location? What's your home QTH? You know, what is your current QTH? Or QSL, which I hate that word. I don't think you'll ever hear me use the word QSL on the air. I hate that three letter acronym. I hate it, I can't stand it. QSL is very seldom used for me unless I'm drilling through a pileup for 15 minutes to try to get to the station. Yes, Yankee, Zulu, India, QSL, not, hey, are you mobile? QSL. How are you doing today? Are you doing good? QSL. No, no, not QSL. Get that word out of your head as a new person. For those who are current hams for 30 years, you probably understand what I'm saying. You may be guilty of using the word, or the three letter acronym QSL for various, because it's easy, it's a habit, you know? Did you have a good day today? QSL. Do you hate this video with me rambling? QSL. No. I use the word Roger. And there's been only been like two or three people that we don't use Roger in ham radio. Really? Really? Well, I could say we don't really use 10-4. Although 10-4 is a viable option to use on ham radio if you really wanted to. You know, uh, do you want to go to Simplex? Yeah, 10-4. Or I'm heading out. I'll see you in a minute. 10-4. Okay. You could use 10-4, but I don't hear it often on the radio because people think it is CB lingo or police band lingo. So refrain from using 10-4. You could say oh, things like yes and okay. Roger that. You know, I say Roger. Yeah, Roger. Oh yeah, QSL. Like I'm, like I'm saying something wrong because I'm saying Roger. That's what you think about Q codes is it doesn't have to be well, uh, you know, Q, I have some QRM with my QSO on my QTH, you know. Come on, really, let's, let's bring it back to ham radio and general communications without being over technical, you know what I mean? Stay away from that. So back to the other side of the coin for the people that are seasoned hams, 
when you welcome them, you know, be courteous. If they accidentally screw up, or the, the best one is when they have a Chinese radio, and it's got the Roger beep on it, you know, and you let go of the button, the Chinese put this beep in there, and you let go of the button, it's like, dee beep, and you're like, shut that damn thing off. Just, hey, um, Chris, so your radio you just got, you have a, uh, a tone, it's probably called Roger beep or courtesy tone, look in the manual, turn that off, because it's really not allowed on the repeater, but it's also annoying with everybody with their speakers turned up. Uh, you know, if you can't figure it out later, I'll, pr I'll try to send you an email to help you or something. Be the Elmer, right? I try to help them out. But to yell at them is not the way to do it. So the last thing I can tell you about talking on a ham radio is tips. Okay, we already established. You can talk about whatever you want. Here's another tip. When you're going into a repeater, or if you're on Simplex Mobile, whatever, aside from HF, we're talking VHF, UHF. When you're on a repeater and someone says, hey, you're a little too far, you're not making it into the repeater and you're standing like this, and you got an external antenna out, and that's the best you're gonna get, don't keep going on and on. Okay, how's this? Is, is this any better? How about now? Like, you don't need to yell. Like, just, okay, I'm not making it in. I'll wait till I get a couple minutes closer. KJ4YZI, standing by. Like, let's just, no. <laughs> the, wife, the wife's like, are you yelling at somebody? No, I'm not, I'm just example. So, uh, that's, you know, pretty much when you can't make it into a repeater and it's just all you hear, let me show you what they hear on their end when you're talking in, you can't make it. This is what they hear. <laughs> okay, that's unpleasant to hear. So when you continuously do it, if you're not making it right now and you haven't moved and you haven't changed anything, you're not gonna make it in five minutes just sitting there. So one good thing to do, not tie up or key up or keep talking. You know, if I know I'm making it in and I know I'm close to the repeater, I can have a two, three, two, three minute long conversation, whatever. But don't go, okay, well, I was born, uh, you know, 1976. And, uh, you know, my first radio is a Heath kit and all they hear on the other end as you're going on <laughs> is that. I mean, it, and then they come back to you and say, no, nope, I didn't get any of that. So I'll stand by until you're closer. Uh, and then it gets back on there. Okay, well, I'm sorry I'm not making it. How, how about this? Is that any better? How about this? You know, just let it go. You're not making it into the repeater. So I'm gonna end the video here. We talked about how to talk, a couple of things you can do to get into it, uh, you know, into a conversation, engage the other person, uh, engage yourself, volunteer your own information. If he's not willing to give up any information, okay, well, I got him, you know, I got licensed uh, five years ago. This is my third radio. Uh, I just got a new antenna. I hope it sounds good. Um, you know, talking and talking and, and uh, you know, okay, back to you, you know, and you could turn it and, and, and give a directive of when you talk to them. Uh, we don't have to say Roger Dodger or, you know, uh, uh, 10 4 and over and out. Like, you know, we don't have to do that, you know. Sometimes when I'm talking, it's by habit. I'll be like, yeah, well, I'll be at the store in three minutes. Maybe I'll see you there, over. You know, it's kind of just kind of wing it, you know, just kind of throw it out in there if you wanted to. What you don't want to do is this. Okay, 10-4, Roger Dodger, good buddy. We're, uh, we're clear and on the side reading your mail over, over. Like, they're going to pick you out right there. Oh, that guy, I ain't talking to him. He's a, he's a knucklehead, you know? Hey, it, it is great on CV. I'll get on CV tomorrow. I'll get my truck. I'll get on right now. Roger Dodger, 10-4, good buddy. I will do it on CV. Just kind of keep it off the ham radio you know it's just yeah, just remember somebody's already listening always listening so that's your episode here <laughs> this one was pretty wild I, I don't know this one's uh hopefully you know sum it up be be real for a second hopefully you learned something and it hopefully it took the fear out of getting out the power of that button right there when you push that button knowing that your voice is being broadcast potentially all over the world from your handheld if you're going through a internet bridge or a you know reflector or a talk group it could be very scary but if you want to get a ton of people connected to you right away the very first conversation just get on it but my name's eric and there goes the train my name's eric kj4yzi i'm a brand new ham this is my first transmission i love to learn man you're gonna get tons of people throw an email address is you get your pen ready when you say that they're gonna be all over welcoming you You'll have repeater indexes in your email. You'll have pictures of their shacks. 
You'll have conversations with them on the phone. I mean, you'll have phone numbers flying at you. I want to help, they'll say. Uh, I'll give you some information. You know, we'll, we'll help you find your club, this and that. Maybe we can work one day. And then you'll run into that guy five years down the road and say, I remember you. You helped me out. You gave me all that repeater info. Now you own a ham radio store, you know, and he's coming shopping from you. You know, the world is a small place. It comes around. A lot of good people to meet on ham radio. Enjoy it. And don't be afraid of it. I'll figure out what the next episode's going to be. 7-3, KJ4, YZI.